People are just so easy to figure out, right? I mean, who wouldn't be able to predict everything that a person is going to do in any given situation? And if people are so easy to figure out, well, then why do we even need psychology? I mean, it's, it's obvious, right? Psychology is just common sense, so why do we even need it? Well, it's because psychology and common sense are not the same thing at all. Any assumption that psychology is really that easy to figure out or that people are really so basic is just so untrue. In psychology, we take all of your common sense assumptions about people, the way that they think, feel, and act, and we actually put them to a scientific test. And sometimes, yeah, we find out exactly what you already knew in terms of how people are, but not always. Sometimes we find out things that would just absolutely baffle you and completely surprise you. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about why psychology and common sense are not the same thing. So what is common sense? Well, you can think of common sense, the way that I think about it is it's basically a culture's kind of common knowledge. So things that just everybody kind of knows. It's just basic general knowledge. So something like um, if you're walking alone in a dangerous neighborhood at night, that's probably not a good idea. You shouldn't be doing that. That's really dangerous. Or something like exercising is a way to keep yourself healthy. And if you want to be healthy, you should exercise, you should eat right, uh, you should keep your stress levels down, all of these different things. Also the notion that the earth revolves around the sun, right? That's something that pretty much everybody knows. It's considered to be common knowledge. But here's the thing. A lot of things that aren't true can also be considered common sense. So if we think um, back in history, for example, people used to think that the sun revolved around the earth. And this was very intuitive to the people at the time. It was basic common knowledge. It seemed so obvious to them, even though it wasn't actually true it was still common knowledge. Or this common phrase that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, if only it were that easy, I'm sorry, but eating an apple a day while it might be good for you, it's not going to guarantee that you never get sick. And the same is true about human behavior. A lot of human behavior can seem very predictable, but the fact of the matter is that people are complex. People have different sides to them. They have nuances. People do things that are very surprising. So even the assumptions that you have about human behavior, while they might be common sense, that doesn't mean that they're actually true. Now the things that we know about people in terms of our common sense can be really good accurate information, but it's only when we actually have access to the proper types of information in order to make those judgments about human behavior. If we don't have access to good information about what people do, the way that they think, the way that they act, the way that they feel, right? then we're not going to have very good common sense about people. Even though we interact with people every single day, we still don't know everything about them. So only relying on our intuition or our common sense knowledge to make predictions about people can be really harmful. Sometimes we might just happen to be right based on our own experiences. Maybe our own experiences are giving us good, valuable information, but maybe not. And if we're making assumptions about people based on bad information, based on our assumptions that haven't been tested, well, this is where you run into a really big problem. And this leads me into the idea of psychology and how it's different than just common sense. Psychology is first and foremost a science. It is the science of how people think, feel, and act. So a psychologist who studies psychology scientifically is going to look at all of these ideas that we have about people, the way that we perceive people, the way that we make assumptions about people, and it's going to take all those assumptions and it's actually going to test them in a scientific way so that we can actually figure out, well, we have this assumption about what people do, but is it accurate? Is it real or is it just in our minds? So psychologists use what is called the scientific method to test assumptions. So what they will do is they will start with some kind of an idea or a question. They might be interested in something about human nature. They'll do a whole lot of background work on that particular question. They're going to go and they're going to see if there's been other research done by psychologists uh, relating to the same question or a similar question within that field. So they're going to get as much information as they can about the topic. 
then they're going to form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is just a testable prediction. So they've had this question, right? This burning question about people. They've done their research. Now they make a prediction about what they think is going to happen. They then have to test that prediction in a scientific way, right? So they have to be very upfront about how they're testing things. Their definitions have to be clear. And then once they actually get some results, they have to analyze those results using statistics. So the scientists don't just get to decide whether their results were supported. They actually have to use statistics to tell them whether their results are supported or not. Regardless of whether they are supported or not, it's still an interesting finding. And hopefully they will be able to write up that finding and have it go through a very rigorous peer review process and get published in some kind of a scientific psychology journal. So that's the whole process basically of how a psychologist uses science to test their assumptions about human beings. And I'll tell you right now, if there's one thing that I've learned about studying psychology for so many years, it's that people come in with a lot of assumptions about what people are like. And what you'll find is that some of your common sense assumptions do turn out to be true, but a lot of them don't. Now, I do realize you might need a little bit more convincing, which is why I I'm going to include a couple of examples to show you why common sense and psychology don't always actually mean the same thing. So let's look at the example of the bystander effect. So let's say you are just a normal person. You're on your way to work in the big city. There's lots of crowds around you, lots of people. Everyone's busy rushing to and fro. And in front of you, you see a woman who clutches her chest and then collapses to the ground in front of everybody. What do you think you would do in this situation? Heck, what do you think anybody would do in this situation? Now, your common sense would probably tell you that, well, people are going to help her, right? I mean, there's a big crowd here. Someone is going to help this woman. In fact, you yourself are going to help this woman because she's clearly having a heart attack. But what psychology tells us when we actually research these situations is very different. There's something called the bystander effect where if you put people into a big crowd and there's an emergency, people are actually a lot less likely to help because it's easier to kind of put responsibility onto other people or to not notice that something is happening in the first place or to just defer responsibility completely. And there's a lot of you know, reasons why the bystander effect exists. I'm not going to get into it in this video. But basically, when we research this type of situation scientifically, we find that people don't do what you would expect them to do. Another example is with the notion of conformity. There's been a lot of social psychology experiments on this topic. So once again, I'm going to put you in a hypothetical situation. Let's say that you are participating in a study in a lab and you're sitting down with a couple other participants and the research assistant is showing you a couple of slides. And on one of the slides, you have three lines. And the research assistant asks you which line is the shortest. And each person in the line is going to answer one at a time from left to right. So you happen to be all the way on the right. So you're going to answer the question last. And you're looking at the slides and you're thinking, well, I mean, obviously line C is the shortest. It's plain as day, anybody can see it. So the research assistant starts asking people, person number one, which line is the shortest? They say line B is the shortest. Then they go to person number two. Person two also says line B is the shortest. Person number three says the same thing. Line B is the shortest. And at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck? Line C is the shortest. What are these people thinking? And then the research assistant gets to you. What do you think you would say? Do you think you would say line C is the shortest? Your common sense probably says, yeah, of course you'd say line C is the shortest. It's plain as day. It's right in front of you. But what studies actually show is that most people would actually conform. They would say that line B is the shortest, even though their eyes, their experience is telling them something very different. So that's another way that your common sense and what we actually find in psychology does not always match up. People are very, very interesting. They have a lot of sides. They're very complex. They can be hard to predict. 
The more you learn about the psychology of science, definitely the easier it becomes to predict human behavior. But that's because you have access to all of this good information. You have access to science, which is actually testing these assumptions. Now, it is important to say that psychology and common sense can work so well together. It's really only an issue if you are only relying on your common sense or your intuition to tell you about people. But they can work so well together. Now, psychology hasn't been around for a super long time. It's been around for about 150 years, which is still, you know, a good amount of time. It's not nearly as long as some of the other sciences that have been around for thousands of years, but I digress. 150 years is still enough time for psychology as a science to have become more integrated into our society. And within that time, it has had an impact on our culture. It has hopefully improved the way that people think about others because we now know a lot more about human behavior and it's not just based on assumptions now it's based on something that we've actually tested scientifically so even our common sense that we use nowadays to inform us about people it's a lot more informed because that science of psychology has had a chance to hopefully influence the type of common sense thinking that people are using in their everyday life and the more psychology becomes popular and it becomes more just sort of a mainstream part of our society, the better the science becomes, right, the more research that there is in psychology, hopefully the better our common sense thinking when it comes to people will continue to improve. So that's really how psychology and common sense thinking can work in tandem to only improve the way that the average person sees and thinks about other human beings. Now, I do have a link in the description box down below. I wrote a blog post on this topic. It includes a little bit more information for you if you are interested in that. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It helps support my channel. Ding that notification bell. And of course, make sure you are subscribed if you love psychology and you want to see more psychology-related content. I will see you in the next video. Bye.